Hello everybody, it's Peter at Bobcat Cam UK and what I want to do this morning uh, I'm going to create a video showing how to do some spiral milling in Bobcat um, as you can see on the screen I've got this component in front of me and what I'd like to do is I'd like to do spiral milling around this shape um, what I'll do is I'll take you through how I would create it um, there is different ways you can create it but I'll give you a starter so at least you can see how it's done um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some information off the model uh, I just want to find out what the inside diameter is and the OD and what I can do is I can uh, extract information off the uh, model so I'm going to create myself a new boundary I'm going to call that uh, uh, extracted and I'm going to make that act active so anything I draw will be done on extracted and what I'd like to do is just extract this these two in the inside diameter and outside diameter so I'm going to go into extract single and I'm actually going to project them up to the Z datum which is on Z0 there so if I highlight that and I like the inside right click and select OK you can see I have projected um, the inside diameter and the outside diameter um, they're on the extracted and if I go into dimensions I'm going to go into dimension radius I'm going to click on the outside and I'm also going to click on the inside just to give me some idea so I've got an 80 diameter uh, uh, 80 radius and I've got a 40 radius which is uh, 80 diameter 160 diameter uh, I'll leave them on that layer there and turn them on and off whenever I want to, to use them so what I'll do is I'll just uh, put that back up there and I'll blank it so I can bring it back when I want it if I want some information regarding to it so just press cancel there so I've, I know the information about the inside and the outside and um, what I can do then is proceed to make the job so I've got the information that I require as I say and now I'm going to go into the uh, cam side I'm going to right click and create a new job and you can see now um, it's put up the uh, the wizard for for creating um, the machining what we need to do first is create some stock now if I went into uh, I'm using milling I'm going to use the uh, Bobcat three times mill and I'm going to go into the stock wizard now the stock wizard at the moment I can pick a rectangular cylindrical wireframe solid model or STL file so if I just pick cylindrical and went next you would see it would just put a a cylindrical stock around the model um, that's not what I want to do so I'm going to go back what I want to do is I actually want to pick a wireframe so if I go next now what it's asking me to do I can pick the geometry I'm going to put me uh, select the geometry uh, it's going to be um, let's have a look 63 milli and what I'm going to do is turn on the diameters so I want to pick this I'm going to pick the geometry so I'm going to pick the first one left click inside one right click and select OK and there you can see I've created um, the internal and the external because I want to machine this and I don't want to be doing any fresh air cutting in the middle etc so I'm happy with that select next I'm going to pick the same datum and select OK and there you can see I've created the stop from a wireframe I can turn that off um, I only needed it to create it what I'll do now is I'll create some tool paths um, to machine this up so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put a, a roughing tool path strategy in here you can see it's uh, Bobcad's got the model in there it's also got the stock 
and I wanted to machine it from the stock uh, Bobcat does recognize the stock you can see it's uh, three mil above there and what I'd like to do is I'd like to rough these out uh, along here and along here and I want Bobcat to re recognize the stock which I've got on there so it, in other words it knows it's not going to do some fresh air cutting in the middle there and I also want it to come outside um, so what I'll do is I'll go into right click I'll create a mill 3 axis I'm going to select the geometry and select OK next I'm going to put uh, rapid 10 plunge clearance 2 uh, next so I'm going to pick uh, advanced roughing select next I'm going to use work offset number 1 I want it to art fit where it can. Next, uh, we're going to use a 20 milli cutter. I'm just doing this on the fly, of course. Next, uh, and I want to do what we call adaptive roughing, which is the high speed toolpath. I want to go zig in climb mill. Uh, I don't want zigzag because I'll go climb mill and conventional mill. I just need to go zig so it goes one way, and I want it to climb mill. So like next. I'm going to put, uh, let's put 15 milli depth of cut. Uh, step over, I'm just going to put uh, 2 milli for the side. Uh, better still, I'll put 1.5. So this is what it's going to take off the side of the cutter. And when it's come down 15 milli, I want it to come back up in 1 milli cuts and, and semi rough out. So I'm going to put 15 there so it comes back in 1 milli intervals. I want to leave half a milli on there. <clears throat> excuse me um, select next um, we're just using uh, plunging center cutting select next and what I'd like to do is I'd like to machine the flat lens on the top and what I would like to do I would like to cut it by level and I also want it when it's done the first depth of cut um, it will come back up and semi rough out the 15 milli and then it'll put the next cut on and semi rough that out if not you could have it after the last depth of cut and so it'll go all the way down and then come back up but I'm going to choose after each de de depth of cut select next um, I'm going to use uh, direct and what I'm going to do then is compute As you'll notice on the screen, Bobcad shows you that it's in operation, it's not frozen, it's doing what it needs to do. And as you can see, you can see it's generated the toolpath, it's not got fresh air cutting in the middle. Um, it's roughed out um, the form and it's all come, also semi roughed out the 3D shape and machine the flatlands leaving half a milli on top so what I'll do is I'll just simulate this I want to turn the toolpath off so we can see it and then what I'm going to do is just play it so you can see now it's coming in there, stepping over across there, and you can see the side cut is only taking off what I've told it to take off the side, and go through there. And then after that, I want it to come up and step up in one milli steps, and you can see now it's roughing out the 3D shape, and then it'll come and do the machine flat area machining on top then it's going further down to do that the, the next part of the shape and when it eventually gets up it will then do a trochoidal toolpath through the middle because it's roughing out the shape it's stepping up and now it's doing a trochoidal through the rest of it same for that one this one and for that one as well then it'll just come up out and semi rough them steps so there you can see it's uh, semi roughed out uh, using the uh, 
high speed, the adaptive, and what we'll do then is we'll simulate deviation. And there you can see where it's leaving material in. I told it to leave half a milli on the top. Um, so if I just find out what's on top of there, you can see 0.5 has been left on the top. The other one's leaving a milli and milli. You can see it on the sides there. So that's put the roughing toolpath. What I'm going to do now is do the uh, finishing toolpath. So what I'll do is uh, I'll unblank this toolpath. You can see I've unblanked it. And then what I want to do then is put the uh, spiral toolpath in. So if we're going to machine set up, mill three axis, select the geometry, and select OK. Next, I'm going to put uh, 10, 2, Top of the job is zero. Next. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a spiral toolpath. Select next. Uh, G54, that's my set for that. I'm going to use art fit where I can. Next, I'm going to use a 16 miller ball nose. And uh, let's put some the radius in there. Flute length. Next. So I can start from the outside inwards or start inside and I want to climb mill and I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to start at the outside in this instance. Next. Now what I need to do is me step over. So if I just do this uh, quickly, let's just put a, a two milli step over. Now we've got to find out what the outside height is and the width, which would be the same length. And the inside, which would be the same length. And how much we're leaving in allowance. Well, we know that the, the outside diameter was uh, was 80. Double that out. That's 160. I'm going to come out a little bit more. 165. And the maximum of that width, width would be 165. Just the same as. The inside diameter, that was at um, 40 radius. So we're going to do that. That would be um, 80 diameter so I'm going to do that at uh, let's see let's do it at uh, 70 and the maximum the width of that would be 70 I'm going to allowance nothing and nothing uh, everything's okay as it is next plunge next I'm going to use tool tip it's where you normally set your tools not many people set from the centers these days but tool tip because you want to touch on top of the job select next and we want it to follow and then compute and you can see now it's created um, I've done it with a two milli step over which we can make finer of course um, but you can see that's how it would be going across so if, if I turn the full simulation on going to modules and simulate okay turn the tool paths off now what I don't want to do is I've already seen the roughing so what I'll do is I'll click click on here and it will then fast forward through that operation so we don't have to see it again And you can see now we've got the ball and we've got the tool. So what we want to do now is we want to see that run around there. I've done a bigger step over so you can see it. So if I just slow it down, select OK. So it's coming on the job. Just coming off the job and it's, it's clicking on the side if you can see. So if I fast that up, speed that up. And then what it will do is spiral its way inwards. So you can see it's working from the outside, or you could work from the inside outside, or from the outside in, inwards, which is what I'm doing at the moment. I'll put a bigger step over. And you can see now, 
you're creating a spiral toolpath. The tool is on the job, staying on the job. And you can see I've also gone past it and Bobcat understands the surface I'm doing. So it's doing inside of it as well. So you can see there I've created that. That's my spiral toolpath. If I go into deviation, and you can see there we've got a nice green finish, which tells us we've machined it up. We've just got a course step over there. So if I close that down, you can see we've got that operation. If I go back and edit that feature, next, 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 next. And then what I can do then is I could say I could put a point two step over and just tell it to recompute. And you'll see we'll get a better tool path and a different step over. You can see that now. We've got a tighter tool path. So if we uh, zoom in we can see we've got uh, a finer pitch over there, 0.2 step over. You can see I've come off the surface and I've also come off the surface there. So we get a nice crisp edge. So that's how we do uh, spiral milling. Um, just pull it into position. I'll uh, just do a quick simulation for you so you can see it. Turn off the toolpath, forward to the uh, finishing toolpath. Of course you could use the slider bar to slide across it as well. You can see we're at that position. So now if I just run that one. And you can see we've got a finer, a finer step over. So if I just fast forward that. I can also turn deviation at the same time as well if I wanted to. So you can see it's finishing it just the same as. Even with the deviation on. Go a little bit further forward, so I'll move the and there you can see we've got a finer toolpath. You can see how much is on there by just hitting that button. And you can see within within that tolerance. So uh, hopefully that gives you an insight in, into spiral milling within Bobcat. Um, I'll catch you in the next video, and uh, thank you for watching.